Hello again, everybody! Zagatech is here with the attack line for Monday, January 21st, 2013. Okay, Monday the King Day, of course, honoring the late civil rights activists who, of course, believed in equality for all mankind, no matter what race or sex you are. And what better way to celebrate MLK Day by having the inauguration? re-inauguration of the first black president. Of course, as we all know by now, Obama renewed for a second term today. Yeah, it, he apparently re-inaugurated yesterday because usually the inauguration ceremony takes place on the 20th, but since the 20th was a Sunday, the overall party took place today. With, of course, many celebrities involved, including Kelly Clark Singh, Beyonce was there with Jay-Z, Katy Perry was there, a lot of people were there, and a lot of concerts were going on, including Leonard Skinner over the weekend, and even Lupe Fiasco, who got kicked off for his dissing of Obama, and love him or hate him, because I personally don't like him anymore, because he basically screwed the country. If you saw my attack line the day after, I don't talk politics that much, but the day after the election, I said, we are fucked for four years, unfortunately we all. So love him or hate him, Obama, we inaugurated for another term. On MLK Day. Alright, with that political bullshit out of the way, let's move on with the number one movie in America. After one week, Texas Chainsaw Massacre gets kicked off. Actually, yes, yeah, it was. I don't know, actually, it was uh, Zero Talk 30. That was number one. Yes, Zero Talk 30 got kicked off after one week by. Trying to get it. Mama. Is number one movie. I had to do that. I had to do that for Mama. Yes, Mama, the spooky, stupid horror movie, debuts at number one this week with 33 million in a full day, 28 million three day. But of course, Zero Dark Fitting remains at number two. But unfortunately, bombs include Broken City only making 9 million. But the biggest bomb of the week has to be. I know it! His movie, The Last Stand. Bumbity 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 bum! A bad omen for movie starring Sly Stallone and Bruce Willis both coming out in the next couple weeks and months. But unlike Arnold, both Bruce and Sly didn't do anything stupid to ruin their careers. Like Arnold, 6 million for Last Stand, 10th place, not even in the top 5. Really bombed out. So there you go, there you go. Number one movie! Mama. Mama. Um, you mean Rhapsody? Anyway, now, on with news on the Rolling Stones. Now, there's been a lot of rumors going around about Stones possibly touring this year, and one of the biggest rumors has been the Stones performing at Coachella a couple weeks ago, following their big shows in New York, specifically New Jersey, London, and, well, Brooklyn, New York. The Rolling Stones have reported a show at Coachella. Mick denied it, and even Coachella put on a cryptic picture of their field that looked like a rolling stone on the field. Well, after weeks and weeks of rumors, sources are saying that the rumors involving Stones and Coachella are indeed rumors. That the Stones will not be headlining Coachella this year. Well, Rolling Stone Magazine, pardon the pun, Rolling Stone Magazine said that a source close to the band has told Rolling Stone Magazine, ironically, that the Stones will not be performing at Coachella after a cryptic photo that of an apparent stone. That's what people were saying. So as of right now, Rolling Stones and their people are saying, well, according to sources, according to the band, close to the band, that the Rolling Stones will not be playing at Coachella, despite many rumors. But indeed, the Stones are probably going to tour this year but not at Coachella. Alright. Now on the news on the Billboard Awards. Yes, Billboard Music Awards will take place on Sunday, May 19th. They have the WWE Extreme Rules pay per view. But to be honored at the awards with the Billboard Icon Award is one of my favorite artists of all time, with the exception of Madonna and Michael. And his name is Prince. Yes, Prince will be receiving the Billboard Icon Award at the Billboard Awards, which will, of course, Include, yes, a performance by Prince. As we all know, Prince, one of the most legendary performers and producers and, and artists of all time, 
multiple Grammy winner, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, hell, even won an Oscar for the score for probably his best album and movie, Purple Rain, and even uh, Golden Globe for a song in Happy Feet a few years back. It's probably one of my few artists that I adore to death besides Michael and Madonna. I love Prince, and he deserves his Billboard Icon Award. He turns, can I believe this, 55 this year, along with Madonna. Too bad Michael's not alive to live to 55. So there you go. Prince, to get honored at the Billboard Awards on May 19th, just a few weeks before his 55th birthday on June the 7th. Now, on with a lot of sports. A lot of sports. Starting with the NFL. Yesterday was every man's favorite holiday besides Super Bowl Sunday. Championship Sundays, the AFC and NFC Championship games took place. First things first, in the NFC Championship game, the Atlanta Falcons took on the San Francisco 49ers. And it was almost exactly like last week's divisional game involving the Atlanta Falcons and the Seahawks. Falcons led by halftime at that game against the Seahawks. In the second half, Seahawks catched up to lead 28-27 at the fourth. But the Falcons scored a field goal in the last few seconds to clinch that game to this championship game against the 49ers. It was almost like that game with a different ending. As the uh, Falcons did lead 17 to 6 by the end of the second, by the end of the first quarter, Frisco catched up in the second. In the second half, Frisco really cooked and ended up with the victory 24 to 17. I think that was the, I think that was the score. I gotta double check my stats, but, uh, it was like last week all over again with the different ending Falcons had the lead. 49ers catched up. But this time the Falcons did not win. The 49ers won in the end. As the 49ers were going on to the Super Bowl against, well, the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, the whole Bowl Bowl is taking place. It's brother against brother. John Harbaugh against Jim Harbaugh. As the Ravens clinched the Super Bowl trip by beating the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game, the Pats. The game was... I like the NFC game better. The NFC game more excitement. Although this game had a little bit of excitement of the Pats at the first score, and of course, the Pats scored. But indeed, once Pats thought they had a lead, the, the Ravens with their great throwing quarterback, uh, Frank... Uh, Flacco, and of course, once again, stealing the show, Anquan Bolton, the showcase of last week's game, now this week's game, Bolton striked again, as indeed, with that in mind, and of course, Ray Lewis, on defense as well, it was tough to get through that defense, and the offense is of course, the Ravens outplayed the Pats, and of course, we got brother against brother, Ravens against the 49ers. Coach Harbaugh against Coach Harbaugh. I'm going with the 49ers. I know a lot of people are going with the Ravens because of the Ravens' sentimental vote with Ray Lewis in his definite last game in the Super Bowl. And of course, 49ers making their first player, uh, Super Bowl appearance since Super Bowl 29 in 1995 when Steve Young was quarterback. And both home teams in both championship games lost. Falcons lost at home, so did the Pats. And for Ravens, it was sweet revenge. Ravens lost in the AFC Championship last year against the Pats. This year, they beat them in the AFC Championship. It was sweet revenge. 28-13. It was 28-24 in the Frisco game against the Falcons. Wanted to clear that up. So there you go. So it'll be Ravens against 49ers. Super Bowl 47 with Beyonce Halftime Show. And Alicia Keys doing the anthem. That was just announced. And it'll be, of course, Sunday. Sunday! Super Bowl Sunday, February 3rd. Go Frisco! Now, on with some cage fighting news. A lot of cage fighting took place over the weekend. Starting with Bellator, which took place this past Thursday, following TNA Impact, making its debut on Spike TV. As, uh, it was a decent night of fights. Uh, Michael Chandler. Um... Uh, Digging a Rick Hart in the championship. It was an okay fight. Um, it was a better. There was two championship fights at night. There was a featherweight title and the lightweight title. The lightweight title was a little better because it was kind of more exciting with a decent submission. 
and a back current Patricio Pitbull uh, split decision in the featherweight. The first one was okay, and the next couple rounds were decent excitement. It was an okay fight there. Mikhail Zayats took on Renato Sobato, I mean, Sobal, uh, Babalu, losing in a knockout with a spinning back. That was a decent knockout there. And Jacob Noe defeated Zeb Puccizelli in a TKO. It was a decent night of fights for Bellator. And we'll see what happens this week, even though it's stupid Ben Askren. I hate that fucker. I hate Ben Askren. Because I was at, I never talked about this before. I went to Bellator one time at Caesars Run, so I never really explained it because I hated it so much. It was a bad experience because Ben Askren sucked that night in the Red Trade Championship. Hope someone beats him. Hope he loses, but I doubt it. He's like, Silver GSP, boring ass fights almost. Although GSP's last fight against uh, Condit was exciting. Hope his fight against Diaz is good too. GSP. Now, speaking of GSP, UFC. UFC had their own event wow, this past Saturday night. UFC and FX. King of three straight Saturdays of UFC action. Which, of course, kicked off with Galib Numagudovov taking on Tiago Tavares. It was an okay first fight with a KO. We got Lee Dominator of Survivor Series, a decent fight from what I remember. And Gabriel Gonzaga taking on Ben, ben Rothwell. And Gonzaga got a good choke on Ben Rothwell to get the victory. But my favorite fight of the night, even though I kind of missed the third round, but I saw the first two rounds and it was an exciting fight and it did earn fight of the night honors and it deserved it. Call main event, CB Dollar taking on Daniel Safari. Very exciting fight, very uh, close fight, very exciting, great moments in that fight, great knockout. Almost not got moments. Very exciting fight from what I saw with CB Dow again the victory over Daniel Sarafian, who was one of the finalists of the uh, Ultimate Fighter Brazil. This wasn't Brazil, by the way. So, of course, Brazilians lost, but Thiago's lost. But Gabriel won, and then the Daniel lost to CB Dow. So, the pride of Brazil was underlined on the, the Phenom. Vito Belfort taking on Michael Bisbee. Now, this fight was supposed to go for five rounds, but ended in the second round. What a great head kick by Victor Belfort. Kill a knockout on Bisbing. Ending that fight, knockout of the night, deservingly to Victor Belfort. Great knockout on Bisbing. So there you go. That was my thoughts on UFC and FX. Of course, this upcoming Saturday is UFC on Fox. It'll be Demetrius, Marty Mouse Johnson, defending his lightweight, flyweight title for the first time against John Dodson. Plus, Rampage returns against Gorma Texera. And the Cowboy, Donald Cerrone, takes on Showtime, Anthony Pettis. Should be a great night of fights this upcoming Saturday on Fox. Now, on with WWE Raw Preview for tonight. The last Raw before the Royal Rumble. Now, you saw me review last week. I was kind of mad about last week's Raw. I was kind of disappointed by it. Um, 20th anniversary of Raw wasn't celebrated as it should have. Just because they claimed that with Stone Cold and... Michael's not available. They didn't want any other legends. Bullshit besides Flair and Foley. But, uh, Rock Concert. Looking back on the Rock Concert, it was o okay entertaining, but I've seen better Rock Concerts. The other Rock Concerts we've been making fun of Austin, Goldberg, and Cena were all better. In my mind, they're better executed. Which I'll talk about when I talk about Rock and Punk's feud in the top three questions that must be answered tonight on Wall. Question number three, will any of the new names be announced for the WWE Hall of Fame? Now, Mick Foley is rumored to be in. Yes, no, that's no longer a rumor. It is true. Mick Foley was the first name inducted last week. I mean, rumored. Bam Bam Begalore be is rumored. King Kong Bundy is rumored. Even DX or The Click is rumored to be inducted. Especially with Triple H and Axe Park and all them guys at the uh, NXT events now, so... So we'll see if they're going to talk to DX deserves it, in my mind, as much as Foley. So uh, there we go, see who else gets added to the Hall of Fame. Question number two, will any new participants or new matches be added to the War and Rumble pay-per-view? Now we know the WWE titles on the line, the, t the War titles on the line, Big Show and uh, Bodo. Team Hell No takes on Team World Scouts for the tag team titles. I smell a possible match against Miz and uh, Antonio Cesaro. But that match will be made official tonight. And we got the 3MB, Wade Barrett, Cesaro is in the Wumble, uh, along with Ziggler, Sheamus, Orton, and Cena. But I've seen this before that you can have two matches on the pay per view. You can have a regular match and also be in the Wumble. So Cesaro could defend the title and also take, be in the Wumble as well. 
And that's what could probably happen when it comes to the championship matches. The loser of the world title match may be a surprise entering the Rumble League. If Big Show loses, he may be a surprise. I'm hearing rumored surprises or your New Age Outlaws could be there. Tell me Dreamer and the return of Christian. Hopefully return of Christian and or Mark Henry. So hopefully we get some more matches, especially pre-show matches and new participants be announced for the Rumble that aren't surprised tonight. We head towards Rumble in six days. And in my mind, the build-up for the Rumble has not been the best. Especially, number one question. What will happen between Rock and Punk tonight? Um, I had more excitement. I had more expectations for this Rock's, uh, Rock Punk feud. But unfortunately, the build-up for Rock and Punk has been not been the best. Their opening promo two weeks ago was okay at best. Should have been a lot better. Could have been more climatic. And last week, a little bit more climatic with the Rock concept. Just a standard beat down. It, I think Punk should have used a guitar on the Rock. That would have been a lot better, but anyway, the execution of this feud, with only three weeks to build it, you know, you could expect shittiness. You know, Rock and Cena's feud had a long time to feud, because it was a WrestleMania match, so they had all the time in the world to build it up. Since so it was announced in April, and then when Rock came in, after the Rumble, it was like three months of promotion for Mania. With Punk and Rock, however, Rock's only there for three weeks before the Rumble. He hasn't, he only announced the match in July, but it hasn't been on television since until two weeks ago. So the build-up's not been as good as I thought it was going to be. Hopefully they can kind of have a good, decent end-off before the Rumble and try to build up some momentum that the build-up, lack of build-up has been lack of momentum. I'm trying to word that way. That hopefully that Rocket Punk has some sort of altercation tonight to make up for the lack of momentum because of lack of build-up for this feud. Hopefully the match doesn't suck on Sunday. See what happens on the last wall before the Rumble. Hopefully it doesn't suck like last week. Tonight at 8, 7 Central on, on USA Network. But knowing WWE, we could be disappointed again tonight. But you never know. That is it for the Attack of the Night. See you later for my Raw review. And if I bitch, I'm warning you in advance if I win. I'm warning this time because I know I ran it a lot last week. But I didn't meant to. But if I do win again... You have been warned for my wall review. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the news from Zach. Thank you all so much for watching. See you all later. Yeah. And happy MLK Day, everybody.